rebuilding a Stuart Models twin launch model steam engine part 16, reassembling the cylinder block and fitting the crossheads to the connecting rods. To attach the crosshead guides to the cylinder block, I'm using the countersunk screws that were provided in the box of bits. Really there should have been eight of these countersunk screws, a pair of them for each end of the crosshead guide. There were only four of these countersunk screws in the box of parts, because as I received the engine these crosshead guides were fitted in reverse, so the side that you're currently looking at in this clip just had four holes in the crosshead guides, and that will explain why there are four 8BA hexagon bolts in the box. And now I've turned the crosshead guides round, just like on the drawing, I can use countersunk bolts again. It's time now to bolt this assembly to the engine's support columns. In the box of bits, I found these nuts and washers that are just enough to bolt the engine block to the top of the columns. And also in the box of bits, I found this. This is what's left of the broken lug. This clip shows me carefully sliding the entire assembly onto the columns, and it fits very flat and very solidly. When I made the crankshaft in an earlier episode, I made it from the dimensions published on the drawing, and thankfully everything's in line. It's time now to fit the washers and the nuts that hold the cylinder block onto the top of the columns. So here are the washers going in place. After which it's time to fit the two BA nuts to fasten everything together. The thickness of these two BA nuts varies, and I could use some new ones, but that's not the point. Don't forget, it's always a sympathetic rebuild. These were the nuts made by the man who machined the engine, so I'm going to continue the theme. My job is to rebuild this engine and make it run. I will only make new parts where it is absolutely necessary. And this next part of the video will probably make the experts twitch and write to me to tell me how I should have done it and what I could have done. So here's the bottom line. A new cylinder block casting for this engine, not including the steam chest, just the cylinder block casting with delivery and value added tax VAT in the UK is just under £90. So the easiest and most convenient way of fixing this engine would have been to contact Stuart Models pay the £90 and get them to send me a new cylinder casting. And when you add my fees on top for the machining job, it really is not a practical proposition. I'm going to stop the video here for a moment because I need to say one or two things. There are many different ways to fix this problem, all of which will take time. Heating the cylinder block to red heat and brazing the lug back in place is definitely out of the question. I cannot risk the distortion or the damage to the cylinder block because remember, one mistake equals £90 for a new casting, plus the cost of remachining. So, the answer is simple. I'm just going to stick the part back in place. Oh, shock horror, cry all the experts, but that's the way it is. Loctite 603 will hold the little piece in place. Then I put some more Loctite 603 on the washer, which will further hold the part in place. And then once the nut is tightened, this is going nowhere, because the remaining part of the lug is resting on the top of the column, and the top part of the remaining part of the lug can't move because it has a washer on it. I always find it better to be honest. I'm not even going to bodge this so that it looks like it's never been broken. It has been broken, and the owner of the engine knows this, so what's the point in messing about? This is, after all, a model steam engine. If it was going to be used in a rowing boat for an attempted transatlantic crossing, by model steam engine power, then I think really I would have machined a new cylinder. But mechanically speaking, for the intended use, this repair will be fine. Over now to the motion bracket. If you remember from the last episode, I fitted these Allen head grub screws, which in my opinion are infinitely better than the slot headed 8BA screws that were originally used to hold the motion bracket in position. I'm going to have a look at the valve gear and see how this is put together. And it looks like it's quite well made. It has proper taper pins fitted and the shaft is a really good fit in the motion bracket. So I'll take this out for now, put the pin back in and put it back in the box. It's time now to fit the connecting rod forks to the crossheads. And as always when reassembling engine parts you need plenty of lubrication. But maybe not this much lubrication. So by switching the oil can into reverse, I can remove the surplus oil, and this time, I'll put a little less on. I thought those mushrooms tasted funny that I had for breakfast. Ah, that's better. I've put the first pin in place, and you will of course notice there's quite a lot of movement in this area at the moment. That's because the crosshead guide securing plate at the back is not yet in position. 
Well, I'm definitely having a bad oiling day today. That's another part over-oiled. But never mind, it will all clean off. One viewer wrote in and said there was something out of alignment. Well, I'm sure there is. I'm sure there's a lot of things out of alignment. I will get to this in the fullness of time. It amuses me when people write in, giving the exact time to the second where there is a problem. Some people never say nice things. They just say, oh, there's a problem here at 1 minute 21 seconds. And here's a quick observation from my perspective. I actually see what I'm doing as I'm doing the job, and sometimes I may have to do a specific job more than once. Possibly it's because I've forgotten to press record on the camera, or it's gone spectacularly wrong. And then after all that, I have to sit at the computer for up to three hours for every video, first of all assembling the clips, and then voicing over the clips. So I really do get to see every frame of the video, and that is quite a lot of video to sit through. And I do notice errors. Nobody's perfect. I came across a problem, and this is a good tip, really. This screw is supposed to be 5BA. And I'm using a 5BA nut on the other side, and it's too tight, because the thread is a little bit damaged. And as I mentioned previously, I want to use as many original parts as possible. So all I do is screw the damaged thread into a 5BA die, which cleans it up, and now when I put it in position and use my small pair of surgical forceps to hold the nut at the threaded end, it goes together perfectly. No binding and nice smooth fit. It's important to take time to repair things like this because the last thing you want is to shear a bolt off or just stress out the parts. The quality of machining on this engine varies tremendously. Some of it's good, some of it's not so good. And as I've been turning over the engine, you can see that the crosshead moves away from the crosshead guide. But that's because there's quite a lot of play in the piston rod where it goes into the gland. I'll just give the engine a quick wipe over with a cloth to get rid of all the oil that I splurged all over everywhere. As I said earlier, I'm having a bad oiling day. I got confused with one of the comments, and for this I apologise profusely. It was a random comment about things not being in line, and I thought that the viewer meant this, but of course I hadn't edited this at that time. And as you can see, the right hand crosshead retaining block is slightly twisted. I will correct this. Honestly, I'll correct it. I'll correct it immediately. I put this down to the machining, really. The parts should be a little bit wider to be a snug fit in the crosshead guides, but there's a little bit of play. But on an engine of this age, that's not a bad thing. But I really will put this right in the next video. I'll make a point of showing it to you. By the way, I don't get stressed out at all by the viewers' comments. They're a major source of entertainment as I sit drinking my tea every morning looking through the comments that have come in on the channel. So, the engine is turning over very well at the moment. It's time to fit the drain cocks. I'm using 542 for this, Loctite 542, not 603. But before using any Loctite at all, I make sure they are in the correct position. These drain cocks are very fragile and at the best of times they leak anyway, but you must never do this, never use a pair of pliers or even an excellent barco spanner to tighten the drain cock into the hole. And if you look at this lower drain cock you'll see why. The shaft is bent, and this is definitely not my doing. The way to do it is to try all the drain cocks in different positions in the holes. For instance the first one on the top left didn't need a washer of any kind, because it was perfect. They need to be just finger tight, nipped into the hole finger tight, and with a bit of Loctite 542, they're not going to leak. But depending on the wear and tear, or the general abuse of these drain cocks, no matter how you fit them, they may dribble a little bit. In reality, on an engine like this, I would lock up the drain cocks, I wouldn't use them. But you can, if you wish, use something like T-cut to re-grind them, and get a good fit between the taper plug and the drain cock itself. I'm positioning the drain cocks like this, with the handles at the top on the top pair and at the bottom on the bottom pair, because on this engine there is a pipe that runs between them. So if I had them the other way around, the levers would foul the pipe. In this short clip I'm using some compressed air and moving the valve to check the piston fit, and it's good. Everything feels okay as you turn the crankshaft over. Nothing's binding, no tight spots. It's a little bit on the firm side, but I'm pleased about that, because it does of course have new piston rings and newly reamed bores. 
so it's very much metal-to-metal contact until all the high points wear off. I tested it on air for a longer time than I showed on this video, and I did notice that quite a lot of oil was passing the piston rod gland. The piston rod glands and the actual hole into the cylinder are a little bit on the big side, so I think I will repack these glands using some of my vintage graphited yarn. This stuff's really good. It's the type used in full-size steam engines and it's all plaited together. That's why I have to unpick it to get at the individual strands. That's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.